here at the Poetry Project today. It's a really special night that I've been excited about for a really long time. From Cornelius E.D. and Bob Holman. Poets and arts founders, administrators. I feel like these are my, my comrades, my uh, people I look up to. Um, so honored to host them here tonight. And of course, Bob's. Relatively new book from Coffee House, sing this one back to me, which we've all been waiting for for a very long time. It's huge. Looks like the Cornelius CDs by both of them. So please, I think we have a really full table back there. We'll take a moment to visit a little uh, pop up room store. Um, format's a little different tonight. We're not doing poet, break, poet. It's just going to be a smooth transition from one to the other. So given that, we're going to have both of our guest introducers come up and deliver their introductions up front. So please welcome my co-hosts this evening, Todd Colby and Leanne Brown. This is a special evening. I'm really excited to hear the song forms and performance of Cornelius and Bob. I'm really honored to introduce Cornelius. I love hearing him read and perform. And I um, just want to say a little bit, a lot of you probably know his work, but he's, he's just all over the place in the best of ways. He's just been, you know, uh, at the forefront of so many um, amazing projects, you know, including everybody knows about Cape Canem, I hope, the great nonprofit organization. He started with um, Toy Delicat in um, 1996. It's really been a a, a big force in the in the world of poetry and the world itself to get young poets out there, African American poets, their first book projects and gatherings in the summer. But his own work um, is just a really, um, you know, far ranging. Um, just a few of the books he's published: Hard Headed Weather, um, Putnam Sons, um, Brutal Imagination, which I'm especially interested in because of the um, work he did with the the Susan Smith story and how she admitted this, you know, African American man who kidnapped her children and just the ballad like um, kind of, you know, intensity of that story and how he handled that and made it into a play and how you know it was this imaginary um, you know scapegoat that she invented. Um, I'm very um, interested tonight that he's gonna be performing with this full band and I've gotten a hold of a, a copy of a Book of Hooks, which I hope everybody can get a hold of, especially, um, I'm sure a lot of that will manifest tonight because it has songs. It's, he works with song forms. Um, for example, he uses, uh, it uses liner notes in this really great way to use a prose kind of commentary back and forth with the poems. So like, um, he uses, like one example, it says, Woody Guthrie's This Land Is Your Land, um, written in, what was, it, what was the word he said? Is it, um, the bizarre universe. Yeah, I didn't write that down. Yeah, just like this, this, um, this kind of amazing uh, remixing of song form and the tradition of ballads, um, you know, the blues, everything from Lord Byron to, um, you know, Woody Guthrie is manifested there. And um, the other thing I wanted to say is that I'm really looking forward to asking you to help me welcome Cornelius Eady and his full band. Thank you. Yeah. spotlight of America's media light, bringing new energy to words and giving new meaning to what it means to be a poet in this late empire of everything. His boundless energy as a poet and poetry evangelist has helped propagate the very essence of not only poetry, but of language itself, holding tight to the nobility of words and the cultures that use them, sing with them, mourn with them, celebrate with them. He's helped preserve the past by instilling in current and future poets a necessary sense of lineage. Bob celebrates all expression. There are no margins in Bob's world. All the world itself and beyond is the field for poetry. 
All experience, no matter how mundane or grand, makes its way into the mighty breath of Bob. His, his, embrace, yeah, here, here. his embracement of language teaches us patterns of history and the subtle transformations of our heritage that pay homage not just to the present, but to all those in the past who have broken through the rigid confines of the brutally bland now. Oh, uh -huh. It gets better, Bob. <laughs> Bob is the Whitman of our age. Fused, fused, listen, listen, fused, and I, oh wait, yes. fused with the beautiful DNA of Alan Ginsberg. I know, just a moment of silence for that. <laughs> Moving through contemporary poetry with the velocity of a truck, spewing words that become poems of celebration, a whirlwind of sound and meaning, a fierce force full of love and memory. You want to repeat that? And it was Bob who turned me on to the great poems of um, Percy Dove Tonsils. <laughs> and he said, have you ever heard of Ernie Kovacs? And I said, yeah, but I, and he said, just look it up. And this is pre-YouTube, so I had to search everywhere. So thank you for that as well, Bob. Bob's life as a poet has included time here at the Poetry Project and the New Eureka Poets Cafe, where he co-edited the National Award winning anthology Aloud Voices from the New Eureka po Poets Cafe. The other co-editor is here with us tonight. <laughs> yeah. And the Bowery Poetry Club, which he founded. He's also made stops, or more accurately, landed along the way at Columbia University, Nightline, PBS, Charlie Rose, MTV, NPR, and Good Morning America, to name but a few. He's published more books and made more recordings than I have time to mention here, but I will say his most recent collection, Sing This One Back to Me, is heartfelt and hilarious, moving through the debris of modernity into a shiny and vibrant new way of embracing the world, thistles and all. Bob Holman.